Kevin? No. It's Iowa. So, like, if you're going to have a podcast where you talk about movies, you should really, like, know how movies are made or have, like, experience in the movie industry. Because if you don't, you know, it's like, then you're just, like, two random people talking about movies and, like, who really cares about that? You're just people. Anybody can talk about movies. It's like, it's not special. And when we started this podcast, I was really scared, like really, really scared because, you know, I, you know, I was alone here with you, but when I watched you grow and I saw you get better as a podcast, I wasn't scared anymore. Like the more you did this, the more you spoke, the words you spoke, the first interviews you had, I just started feeling better about it. Does that make any sense? Dad, you're so embarrassing. We're talking eighth grade on the Pod of Dreams. Hey guys, uh, it's Kayla back with another video. So, the topic of today's video is being yourself. Being yourself can be hard. And it's like, aren't I always being myself? And yeah, for sure. But being yourself is like not changing yourself to impress someone else. A lot of people like call me quiet or shy or whatever. But I'm not quiet. Most quiet, Kayla Day. I don't talk a lot at school, but if people talk to me and stuff, they'd find out that I'm like really funny and cool and talkative. By the way, I like your shirt a lot. It's like so cool. What? Kayla, one more week of eighth grade, huh? Huh? I said one more week of eighth grade, right? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, huh? Okay, so growing up can be a little bit scary and weird. We will begin to explore these changing bodies of yours. It's gonna be lit. Don't hold back. I wanna break free. As always, make sure to share and subscribe to my channel, Gucci. I think you're so cool. Maybe you just need to put yourself out there a little. I'm gonna stop no, eating with hey, you if you I'm keep saying one, You said I can say one thing. Oh, oh. I'm really, like, nervous all the time. I try really hard not to feel that way. But you just need to face your fears and let people know the real you. Just grab my phone, how to charge you. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I charge it too. But my, my phone, I... Just because things are happening right now doesn't mean they're always gonna happen. Who was in there? Just sort of my hopes and dreams. Right. I was a complete mess when I was your age. Really? Eighth grade is the worst. You never know what's next. And that's what makes things exciting and scary and fun. When did you get Snapchat? What grade? Fifth grade. Fifth, Fifth grade? grade? Oh, what? Yo, oh, really weird. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pod of Dreams. If you listen, we shall pod. Tweaked it up. All right. We're talking eighth grade. I needed a palate cleanser from the horrors of Midsommar last week. And my palate is officially cleansed. But Eric and I, you, you and I, we've been kind of off. I can see a grin on your face. My brain's telling me that that grin on your face indicates that we're probably having another week where we're just not in sync. My my desperate hopes that we'd be close together have failed. Is that accurate? Am I reading your facial tics correctly? Well, so, okay. Um, Uh-oh. I, I will say this. So I have a question. I have a question for you about this. And I think the question I'm going to ask is clouded by my understanding and interpretation of the person that made this movie, which is Bo Burnham. And hit like his perspective. And I think okay. what I know about him, what I've heard him say, what I've, you know, listened to and kind of interpreted from his whole, his whole thing, like who he is and sure, his persona. We've both seen inside. Sure. <laughs> well, his stand up, all of it, um, it has kind of clouded what I think about this movie. And it raises a question for me. And so my question okay. to you is does the movie and the filmmaker, hate this character hate the subject and the protagonist the main person in this movie does he does the movie and the filmmaker hate everything about her and d does he kind of despise what she finds important 
Oh my that God. Was my, that was my question. The whole time I'm watching this is like, is, is this a movie poking fun at in kind of a nasty, mean way about this, what this teenage girl finds important in her life? Oh my God. Okay. You and I maybe then didn't, if you're even asking that question, you and I maybe just saw. So, very am I wrong? Movies. Am I wrong? I, I, I Dude, didn't am get, I wrong? Dude, am I wrong? I didn't get any impression that he despised the main character. That, okay. Uh, Bo I, Burnham I get, hates, Bo Burnham hates social media, right? His whole thing. Is, so he got famous as a social media personality on YouTube and he kind of hates that, right? He kind of hates our, what we put our importance in the internet and our importance on, our online personas, right? Am I wrong about that? So, right. But can we just take a second to pause? I mean, so let's, are you able to at all separate what you know about Bo Burnham now in 2023 from just the experience of viewing this movie? Or is that something you I can had a hard, attempt to I do? I had a hard time with that because I think the, the way we look at this Kayla character is sad. I mean, she's very sad. She's a sad person. And but it doesn't end sad, though. That's the thing. She starts sad. And, and why she's sad is an important oh, she question. She becomes the May Queen and her boyfriend gets burned in a hut at the end of the movie. Is that what so it, you mentioned? That? You mentioned Midsommar was uh, you felt that was female empowering. I felt that wasn't at all. I felt like she was micromanaged to the nine and she had no agency at any point throughout the movie. This is this is the opposite. I feel like this is very empowering. This 14 year old for girl tells off the girl that was mean to her and she's proud of herself. Yeah, that's as that's as much agency as is feasible in the context of her life and who she is, and that she makes choices and decisions about who she is and who she's going to be. But I think it's fair to look at this movie and say there's suspicion and frustration about social media, like how it impacts youth, how it impacts the lived experience. That that's in this movie, and absolutely, with you have extra knowledge about Bo Burnham and his worldview. That can make it even more strong. But that that's not a criticism of Kayla. That's a, a criticism and acknowledgement of the impact social media has on people in general. Kayla is just our entry point. Uh, but the cr- critique of social media isn't really on Kayla um, at all. But is she, so she plays a character who's recording these YouTube videos and saying kind of like us <laughs> saying these things into a camera for nobody. And nobody's listening to it. Nobody's. There's she viewing it. It's literally just she's doing it for herself, but in this like sort of sick kind of desire to have internet fame, which he, the person who wrote this movie and directed this movie, came to fame from the internet, right? He was like in his teens and he did these weird, like the kind of weird Al parody music videos on YouTube and sort became more, famous. more raunchy than weird right Al, but yeah, the, the concept's the same. A little and more became shock famous. humor. And yeah. The only reason he's making this movie is because of the internet and because of YouTube. Sure. Right? Okay. And I think he kind of hates that, right? I, I think he he thinks the desire to want to be liked online is something he despises. Uh, and this sure. girl, the character of the movie, that's her only life goal throughout the whole movie until the end. I guess she does say, I'm not going to make videos anymore at the very end of the movie. But She makes a very yes conscious change to kind of reject that pursuit. That that, that way leads to madness. That, that There's no happiness in pursuing uh, fame and connection on social media and trying to be friends with shitty people in terms of status. Pursuing this kind of status, she rejects it by the but end. But for most of the movie, she all she cares about is making YouTube videos and, and she, having having a online social presence. She takes pictures. You know, the idea that like, she wakes up and spends 20 minutes getting makeup on and then takes a picture like, oh, just woke up like this. Correct. Like, that's very critical. It's yes, but that's, sad, and he, he sad. frames sure. it as sad sure. and depressing, and I think he's 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 telling that this person in this movie is like kind of worthless I, and everything boy, she cares about is worthless i don't think so because ultimately what underlies that desire for connection or, or fame is a desire i mean in the end she changes her like she wants a friend she she wants some really basic things she wants to connect with other humans and root them to her and that's i don't think he's 
hates that impulse at all. I don't think he's critical of that impulse at all. I think he's suspicious of social media's ability to actually do that in a satisfying way. The social media I can't think, give you the actual connection. I that think you in crave the end, desire. you're right. In the end, she well, she makes that determination. But for the vast majority of this movie, and for yeah. what what this it's fourteen year old, thirteen fourteen year old girl he cares lessons. about, he hates the filmmaker. Hates it. He doesn't and hate it's her. Obvious. He hates the social mm. media impact. I disagree. But see, so that's what, that, that but that's my it. problem with Bull Burnham. Is I think. I think I don't think social media is the the root cause of these symptoms. I, I think there it exaggerates it and amplifies these things. Uh, these need to be liked. But that's just a I agree. And I think 14, that's in the movie. 13 year- I think that's absolutely in the movie. Yes. She's dealing with. Uh, so there's a lot of reasons why I like this movie, because disconnect from the social media aspect of all of this, which is, which is like the movie. basically it's not the whole movie. It isn't. I mean, you're going to do this thing. That's like 98 percent of the movie. You're going to make that claim, which is incorrect and problematic and annoying. I'm just going to pause you. The it's a major point of the movie. It is a major point of the movie, but it's not the only movie because underlying all that is the desire to socialize, anxiety about interacting uh, at a pool party. I, I didn't have social media when I was 14, but she walks in to this pool party. She has a panic attack in the bathroom. Well, it's framed like a horror scene. I mean, it really Correct. is. It's terrifying. Yeah. And for yeah. some of us, Eric, in eighth grade, Walking into social media felt like that exactly. That yeah. feeling. No, I where know. Where do I go? Where do I stand? Who do I, Who talk, do I to? talk to? Yeah. How should I look? What do I do? How does this work? What am I supposed to say? What would be cool? There's no social media until later on. Her phone's dying or charging. She doesn't have it with her. She's in the pool. It's by the water. And it captures that moment perfectly. She has moments where she tries to actually have real world conversations. And she's really awkward and shy and has a hard time doing it because she's so anxious. And eighth grade is almost universally one of the most awkward times, at least in American life. And it captures that. And that that tension, that social anxiety that's there and universal is there throughout the movie. And it's not just manifested on social media. Social media is how you have to pursue it. I mean, it's you're stuck. If you were an eighth grader in 2018, when this movie takes place, 2017, whatever it is. You, if you're trying to get status, you're trying to connect, you're trying to seem cool, you have to be on social media. At least that would be a reasonable assumption for the average eighth grader to assume. And she pursues stuff unsuccessfully on social media, and it amplifies exactly what she's feeling. Um, and it is a big part of the movie, but it is as far from the only point. It's not even the base. I, I think there's nothing but empathy for Kayla all throughout the movie. I, I, I don't think for a second he thinks she's being stupid or pathetic, at least not in a way that we all kind of were using as pathetic. Sometimes we do peer out, and we get like Kayla vision. There's one like at the pool party, we get Kayla vision, but then like the music becomes like adult vision because sometimes you get this. Okay, with the benefit of hindsight, this is very silly and absurd. All the things we worried about in eighth grade, almost none of them mattered. And there's this acknowledgement about that kind of tension, right? Like she's after this eighth grade hot guy who's doing muscle stuff and he's like scrawny as hell and he's a fucking idiot. And yet she's desires him. And for her, it's this big dramatic thing. Someday she'll probably realize actually by the end of the movie, she realizes the guy's an idiot. Um, and, and it acknowledges that while also having, I, I just think there's nothing but empathy for Kayla all throughout this. I don't think for a second he's belittling her and mocking her and thinks she's stupid for wanting to be on social media um at all i i just totally emphatically disagree with that take okay. i just don't think I that's had, true i guess i had a different reaction to it I, I don't think he's making fun of her at all and she gets by the end growth she learns that the social media pursuit isn't up she learns even the status she ends up hanging out with the like nerdy kid who isn't going to raise her status at all she has a very nice time eating chicken nuggets and talking about rick and morty and whether or not she believes in god and she's like done and yes she gives a very awkward telling off of the popular girl and it's done super well i mean i love it's it's not super eloquent it's not it's not like a big epic movie monologue she's staring down the whole time because she's still super shy and super scared but she lures down and she tells her off in a not super mean way that basically she's a jerk because that girl was a jerk um I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's the, I guess that's fascinating to me. If your problem with the movie is that you think Bo Burnham is mocking her and doesn't I, have empathy because for Because I know what Bo Burnham thinks about social media. But, I think but, it's, but his, 
animus is towards social media, not the kids. I mean, just think of but the this song, movie made to- me think is like maybe d- does he not does he also blame the need to to want likes and the need to want views as like a uh you know a, a part of the problem, a part of what makes social media so awful is our desire and especially kids' desires to be liked. And it's feeding into that. And see, I disagree. Like that's a basic human need that he acknowledges. Because there were other kids in the movie, even the popular girl. She wasn't. We didn't see her hounding for likes, and uh, you know, in the same way, Kayla was the only one we really saw that was desperate to want to use social media. But, to be but we only saw popular. her behind the scenes. Everybody else is in public, and they have to act cool and aloof because acting too needy isn't cool. But whatever. Um, she's the main character. She's the one who whose inner life we get to see in a way we don't see with any of the other characters so that we don't see the other characters pining for likes and status doesn't really change the fact that I'm sure that they're doing it. And there's just a big difference between I, I, blaming social media versus blaming the impulse to connect and be liked. I, I just, I don't think there's any, any resentment towards kids wanting to be like, I was thinking you want to think, talk about welcome to the internet. Um, he said, you know, there's a line in that song. It, it did everything we designed it to do. They got bombarded with this. It's electronics. It's shaped the brain. She had, um, what was it, Instagram in fifth grade? Yeah, or- there, there was, I was the the conversation they had at the food court. I thought was interesting with the, like high school kids, and, and that's clearly based on what technology. Like, she, is she's a different generation than us, and and they were like, "What are you talking about? She's only four years younger." And it's like, "Well, when did you have Snapchat?" And she's like, oh, "Fifth Snapchat. grade." And they're like, "See, look, so totally different. We didn't have that until we were in like fucking eighth grade or whatever." And it's like that whole discussion. Cause like I didn't have social media. I didn't, I didn't have an email address. I was in college. Like I didn't have any of that shit. I, you but know. if you were eight, if you, if it was been around, if you were in eighth grade in 2017, you would want a phone. You would want to be on the social media apps. Almost certainly you would want to seem cool and be connected and do the stuff that your friends are doing. I, I don't, maybe like, I don't, I don't know if I okay. would have. Okay, fine. You're I've too never cool. had a Facebook account. Like you're too cool. No, okay, that's fine. not true at all. I just, I was just as awkward as she is in this movie. I'm not saying that at all. Like I, I, all, all I'm saying is I think Bo Burnham his he, his dislike for what the internet kind of bled through to the character. I don't know. Uh, and maybe remember, okay, think about white women's Instagram, right? Uh, so on the surface of that song, go to, I mean, it's like listing all this performative nonsense that like women do on Instagram, right? Like white ladies, they, stage these shots to show who they are and it's really fake and phony and false and there's this false online persona everything kayla does is fake and phony and false correct when she's online and she's trying to be liked and then she learns from all of this eric this is the big thing even if it only happens for two minutes at the end of the movie the whole point is that she learns from all of this and grows past it but anyway white woman's instagram we hear that we get like two verses where we're getting just a list of of performative nonsense things and then it peels back and you actually get to connect with the woman that's at the center of the song um she has a little like thing to to her mom like where she's like oh gosh i can't think of the exact uh lines give a hug and kiss to dad she's talking about mama i got a boyfriend and i'm crazy about him and she's having this real moment and it pans out past the instagram filter and gets wide and the shot comes back down he's taking a moment in that song where he's ostensibly saying screw social media performative nonsense to acknowledge the humanity and the realness of the person behind the facade. So I, I absolutely think it's fair to say he hates the facade and does not like the impact of social media on people in general and certainly on kids. But I don't think he blames the kids for wanting to be on social media. It's designed to be addictive. It's designed to get kids on there. It's designed to tweak your anxiety so that you stay plugged in as much as possible. Like, a, um, I, I don't think there's – wow, Kayla's so stupid. She doesn't realize how dumb social media is. She tries. She's earnest. And, and then she realizes, okay, yeah, this isn't going to work. This doesn't make me happy. And then she moves on. And to me, that whole lesson is a lesson about social media, not Kayla being an idiot for wanting in the first place. It just isn't going to work. So she'll never go on Instagram. She'll never do any of those things she's again. She's still on the app. She's still on the app. She gets a, She follows Gabe, the cousin of the mean girl or whatever back on whether that's instagram or twitter i don't i don't know what it is but he says a message thanks for following me back and then they make plans to hang out um so she's still going to interact with social media but she's less concerned with status she's not going to use it 
as much uh, to in a desperate attempt to be liked, to have status, to connect, to get friends that way. She's going to let the pursuit of status dominate her life in a way it did. And of course, she'll still be online and do stuff. It's not like she's not forsaking all social media and the internet forever. I think the other thing that clouded it for me is you said this movie was really funny. Oh, you didn't laugh. Okay. What what parts were funny? Um, I laughed a couple the minutes. Da- in. The d- only stuff, the dad stuff was kind of funny. Okay, so definitely the dad, dad stuff. And sure, the stuff with the banana made me laugh when he's in the car and she's like, "Pay attention to the road, but don't look sad, but don't talk, but don't look that way." Yeah, that, o- that's only the stuff with the dad was funny. Nothing else was funny. Early on in the movie, very early on, actually, I don't know, it's a minute or two in, they're watching. Some they're in health class and they get a video called uh, you know, the hair down there. And there's a woman who's like, we're going to spend the next 20 minutes talking about hair. It's going to be lit awkwardly made me laugh. The guy, the, I don't know. Principal kid jerking whoever, off. What? The kid was jerking off in that scene. Like, that's not funny. I didn't la- I didn't talk about the kid jerking off. Was oh. that what I cited as a funny thing? My God. Well, that was the next, literally the next thing. That oh, okay. Happened. So if I think a moment's funny, but then I, I also have to think yeah. the next moment's funny. Well, I'm just saying, I don't think that kid jerking off is funny. That's fine. All. I'm glad that you noted that that was not funny to you. Kudos to you. I, was it supposed to be funny? I, I don't know. Was he actually jerking off or was he doing something else? And he's just going to be the kid that jerked off in class forever. I don't know. I don't care. Like whether that moment was funny or not, isn't really relevant. The, the principal that does an awkward dab um, that made me laugh. Uh, the stuff with just how stupid the eighth grade Aiden guy or whatever his name was guy was just so dumb. I didn't laugh. I, I, like, I hope we, I hope we had a school shooter and she's trying to like talk to him. And it's clear that he's just so dumb. I wish we'd have a school shooter. I wouldn't be a pussy. I'd take his gun and kick his ass. It was so such an incredibly dumb eighth grade boy thing to say. To act like if there was a school shooter, you would take his gun. The, the school shooting thing was not funny either. I think that was supposed to be a joke, but I didn't find that funny at all. I didn't think it was supposed to be a joke at all. Um, I mean, I guess maybe the girl with the, the fake blood. It's like a sight gag where it's like, Oh shit! What is school shooting? It's like, nope. It's just a training where that's what kids have to go through now. That I was pretty that's how, sad, that's how sad American schools are that kids have to go through school shooter training. Could you acknowledge uh, that being the reality for school kids? How would you do that in a way that's not preachy to you? How would you do it? I don't know. Like, not that way. But. Okay, that's exactly how I. I mean, I acknowledge it. The cop thanks the drama students, and it's hardly a plot point. They spend. Two minutes on it. She stares at Aiden and finds out he's a perv and thinks she needs to like learn how to send naked pictures or whatever to get him to like her because she's again pursuing status. Um, the, the stuff at the pool party and it's like it's cuts to all these shots of these kids just being weird eighth graders. The kid flipping up his eyelids and just doing inane things, but then you you feel Kayla's anxiety as she's in that social situation. That made me laugh less this time, but. The first time, I mean, I I laughed a bunch. I didn't laugh as much towards the end. It gets less funny as it goes along, I think. Um, You know, as she, it gets a little more serious. Um, But no, I laughed a few times. Um, There's another part I laughed at, but it doesn't matter. You didn't laugh. The the stuff with the dad is is great. That you're confused about the banana, getting yelled at in the car. Oh, the the end speech with the dad was amazing. The dad was the best part of this movie. Okay, so you related to the dad. Oh, yeah. Related to the eighth grade girl because. You didn't care about social media and you weren't, I mean, no, it wasn't that I couldn't relate to where I think, I think you're right. that The anxiety that she felt was done well in the movie and like what it's like being that age is tough for everybody. And then, yeah, I, I, I think it accurately portrayed her feelings. I just think this, the social media stuff, which is a huge part of the movie, gave me the impression that the filmmaker didn't like, what she what she found important and was belittling it in a way that I thought was kind of sad. I, I see. I, I feel like we're in like the RRR territory where you're like you didn't think they were in on the joke or they knew how silly it was. I I, I just feel like boy, that's how off your reading is. I I, Maybe. I I just I just think he empathizes with Elsa's per, er, oh God. Elsie's the actor. Um, Kayla's pursuit. Um, well, 
acknowledging that it, it, it's going to fall short. Um, it's not ultimately gratifying. Except that it didn't needs. fall short for him. He became famous and rich and was able to make a movie. So, about Eric, it. if you make movies in Hollywood and you're successful and make a lot of money, can you talk about how shitty it is to make movies? Can you talk about how shitty movie producers are and movie studios are? Do you get to do that or not because you're really successful as a movie maker? That's different because I the exposure that he got from the very thing he's criticizing is what made him famous enough to do the thing that he's doing, which that's I think what a is, movie. That's exactly what a director who does a movie about how shitty it is to make movies. It, it's the exact same scenario. The analogy is perfect. It's just fine. Uh, it, it's totally fair for him to say. I think it's a bit disingenuous. Is all I I'm disagree. Saying. I think he's got anxiety problems, and I think he probably feels deeply unhappy despite all of his internet fame and money. Uh, there's a lot of people who are rich and famous and then still get depressed and commit suicide. Chris Cornell of Soundgarden, Anthony Bourdain, these guys who had it all, quotes, fame, money, they could have lived cushy lives. Anthony Bourdain is a great chef. He would talk about how shitty the food industry is. Well, he got famous, so he can't criticize it. Sorry, Anthony Bourdain. You can't criticize the thing that gave you your status. Sorry. Not fair. Like it's That's such a different weird... because it's, it's exposure that he got from the thing. And then him Anthony Green got famous as a chef. Exposure. He got famous as a chef. We know doing, he got famous for doing the thing that he's criticizing. He's he, that's different. That's a different. It's not example. a different thing. Anthony Green got famous for being a chef, and then he certainly criticized the food industry. Okay, uh, and then Bo Burnham got famous because of social media, and he's critical of social media. It really is the same thing. Uh, it's a very bizarre that in this case you just. Can't he just isn't allowed to criticize it because he, he got famous from it. It's bizarre to me. Um, yes, it, it gave him the ability to make this movie in the first place. Without social media, he would never have been able to make eighth grade a movie about social media and why it maybe doesn't work for some people or work in general or however broad you want to make the claims that are in this movie. I think the other thing for me too is Book Smart, I think, is so much funnier and so much better than this. I know she's in high school in Book Booksmart, and this is about an eighth grader, so it's a different, obviously, a different time in somebody's life. But Book Smart's just a thousand times better than this. I, I haven't seen Book Smart. I suspect that I would like Book Smart less than you because I, I know what you think is funny and what I think is funny, and eighth grade is more understated and probably less of a, a less broad as comedy. Um, I'm sure book smart. There's a lot of zany <laughs> so, because I'm a big dummy and I only get broad comedy and not the minutia. You get it. It's nothing quite, it has to do with taste, Eric. It is like in music, you love a lot of guitar. You, you want, you, you're, you wanted Prince to do more heavy guitar stuff. You, you feel like he didn't do enough guitar riffing and shredding. That's how you feel. Cause you There's love not enough shredding, shredding. And- in eighth grade, for sure. Definitely. Well, my not point is, you know, you, you like the movie Blockers. We talked. I Blockers wasn't. I didn't either. like that. It was OK. I don't. It's not that I liked that movie. You Come thought on. it was funny. I didn't it laugh okay. once in that movie. I didn't laugh once in Blockers. I would not. If I was rating that movie, I wouldn't give it a very high rating. I didn't. I didn't like that movie. OK. OK. okay fair enough. I, I want to talk about one scene, which. I, you're probably not going to like it, but it, it's almost not about liking it. I just think it was incredible. And it does something I think is very difficult to do. And it's the scene where Kayla is getting a ride home. Can we talk about that scene? Sure. How much did you hate that scene? Well, it, in what way? I mean, I, it was absolutely uncomfortable and awful. And I mean, I, I, it was one of the scenes where I thought like he was empathizing with her situation. And he was like, this is awful that this girl would have to go through something like that. And and people haven't seen like, so Kayla's, she's very bummed out for most of the movie, but then she, she does this thing where, you know, she gets like a mentor for high school, like a rising senior. She's going to be a freshman. She gets somebody who mentors her and it goes really well and it helps give her confidence and helps. Why wouldn't you have freshman mentor eighth graders instead of seniors? That's such an odd, it's a weird thing. Like you're having 18 year olds hang with 14 year olds. That's crazy. Well, the, the stuff that happens outside. Did that happen in your in your high school? No, we have there are no mentors. Did you have middle school or did you have junior high? We called it junior high. 
So you had so you had seventh and eighth grade. Just because right, in grade. this movie she's in middle school, which is sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Right, right, my, right. my kids will have middle school, but so she's in eighth grade and she's hanging out with high school seniors. Well, the mentor, I mean, it's it's you're supposed to shadow it's them for weird. a day. Um, the, the stuff that happens outside of school is like extra or whatever. But right. That's fine. I, but whatever it could you could that's fine i i see the logic if i'm an administrator you've convinced me eric but in this movie it's seniors whatever she goes to the mall to meet her mentor her mentor invites her so she goes and she just kind of sits there and sees there's there's two guys two girls they talk about a lot of things uh but you know the social media conversation being part of it um her dad spies on her she's actually gonna get a ride home she's riding with her mentor olivia and this other guy, I can't even remember his name, but it's the guy who's got the car. They're outside. The older girl says, let's drop Kayla off first. And she's like, no, no, I mean, this is your house right here. We're good. And he lets Olivia off. And then he starts driving a little ways away. And basically starts hitting on her and says, we can't talk. Uh, I'm in the front near the back. It's kind of weird. And then he and goes so- in the back. She, you know, she makes a comment how she won't turn 18 in high school. So she's like, like my kids are, will be, they won't turn 18 in high school. You didn't either. Cause you were right. Oh, I'm you not, have a no, summer I, I turned, birthday. I, as the opposite. I turned 18. So you were the oldest my... kid in your class. Correct. One of them. Okay. As opposed to the youngest. Yes. Right. So she, Kayla's the opposite of this, but so, so she wasn't quite yet 14. She would have been 13 years old. Right. I think she's 14. I think she's turned. Well, she 14. hadn't finished eighth grade yet. So she would have turned 14 that summer. I guess, I guess that math checks out 14, 15. I mean, it doesn't matter. You're right. about to say that she's way too young and the guy's a creep, which he is. But well, yeah, I mean, I'm, that's all I'm saying is like this. This is fucked up. What happens to her? Yeah, the guy, the guy is an absolute creep. Um, so he, he might be 18 and she's 13. Like, that's fucking crazy. It is hit on in that situation. But it is. Me. It is. Anyway, he gets to the back seat. He, he does a game of truth or dare. And it's very clear. If you pay any attention at all, Kayla's very uncomfortable, but she's trying to seem cool. She's trying to seek that status and doesn't want to seem lame. And he tries to keep her to keep doing dare. And he's trying to turn it into a sexual situation. Um, And he never threatens her. He doesn't say, you know, I'm going to hurt you. It's not like some punk guy in an 80s revenge movie. He's like, "Ah, I'm going to rape you. Um, He never even says the word sex. He doesn't like say, I want to have sex with you because I'm going to. But it's this very dangerous, complicated situation because she also needs him to get a ride home. Um, and in that moment, he tells her that, you know, her dare is to take her shirt off. And she stands her ground in a situation that would be very difficult to stand her ground. And this is a situation I think many women have found themselves in at various points. And it's like, is it easier? Do I just comply? What do I do? How do I handle this? Um, but she doesn't want to seem uncool to her, her new buddy, Olivia. And she just, she stands her ground in a way that's very difficult to me, shows a lot of agency for a 13 year old girl. Um, I think it'd be very, very difficult to do. Yeah. Or he and, tries to grab her. She's like, stop. And she, and he's just like, sorry, sorry. And, and then she's like, oh. apologizing afterwards too. Yeah. And she shouldn't have to apologize, but she's desperate. She doesn't want but him she, to tell she Olivia. She drew a line. She drew a line like, Correct. Nope, stop. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I'm not me. doing this. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And then he tries to put it off like he's doing her a favor, like a, a, a yeah, super all duper the, asshole. Yeah, all the high school boys are going to, you know, I was trying to help you out. Yeah, I mean, he's a piece of shit. Like, he's an 18-year-old he trying to do something with a 13-year-old, which is, like, absolutely not okay in any scenario and completely fucked. And illegal, I think, in most states is a fucking crime what this guy was doing. Um, sure. Yeah, it was bad. But it's it's one of those things. Like there aren't many scenes where you get the sense of just how, without any threat of violence, without anything overtly explicit. But I was gonna say it's interesting because Bo Burnham is in where he plays kind of a rapist. Yeah, oh, or promising, no, not kind of, not kind of promis- promising young woman. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Did you not hear that? Yeah, promising you, young you woman. You froze for a minute there. So okay. sorry. So yeah, I just. Oh, uh, we froze. Okay, but yeah, so promising young woman is the movie, and he plays he plays a rapist basically. But, but he's a nice guy. But he's just he's a nice guy. He was a kid. I'm jo- I'm joking. That's what he says in his defense in that movie. Right. Uh, no, he's it's certainly cr- I he, he, he he to me yes, that's absolutely a time where he's empathizing with something that women in particular have to go through and deal with. 
the sexual danger and power imbalance. Um, she stands her ground, but she's very distraught by it. And she goes to a room and she slams the door and she's very upset, understandably so. Um, but it's like, it's like there aren't many scenes that really convey those kind of situations that women can be in. And it's awful, it's uncomfortable, but it should be. Um, and you think, I mean, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't kill him. She, I mean, he's not going to go to jail. She, in fact, doesn't want anybody to know about it. But she at least says no, holds her ground in a way that I think is very empowering and heroic in a very, you know, everyday sort of way, not in a Marvel superhero sort of way. Um, and I think it's an incredible scene. I mean, it's very impactful and it resonates. Uh, I mean, it's one of those things that help her decide, like, okay, I'm going to pretend I like blowjobs to impress this idiot guy. And, you know, in the end, she doesn't, decides not to pursue the idiot guy. Like, I love the shot. She's at her graduation and she's in the line and she walks down the hall. We think she's going to pursue Aiden, the idiot guy. And then she turns and confronts the girl who's just kind of mean to her. Yeah, I mean, what, what's, inter- what's interesting is the all, all of the videos which she makes, which nobody sees. Or it's, she actually gives really good advice. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's one of those things like, are you listening to what you're saying? Because what you're saying is actually... And like, then she does. That first in, yeah. video she does, she listens to herself by the end. Yeah. That first one she does, it comes back full, full circle. She doesn't take her own advice initially when she does that first video. And she's projecting stuff too, like the pool party. Like she just, so like I'd invite this weird girl to a pool party. Right. And it's like, she's using the hope that people will see what she's like because she struggles socially. And this is, these videos to me, that it's not Bill Burnham mocking her for being on social media and wanting friends and likes and attention. She's looking to connect. She just wants a friend like you, you, her goal. In a pathetic way. I mean, the goals are shallow. You, you're pathetic is your word. I don't. I don't think he views her as pathetic. She's just pursuing the wrong things. What's happened? I think. Like, she, I think she. I think the movie does view her as pathetic, but I. I disagree so emphatically with that reading. Like we see her like time capsule of okay, this is what she was looking for in sixth grade, and this is like the culmination of that. Like I hope you have a hot boyfriend and you're you're popular and you're all this stuff. And she ends up burning it because she realizes okay, these were kind of childish pursuits i guess or unsatisfying i i wouldn't view it pathetic or based off the internet sure or stuff that she'd seen or what she thought she's supposed to do or what she needed to do to get liked and attention and to to be happy be happy is probably how i put it. this is what you need to be happy but she realizes actually those pursuit things aren't going to make me happy and i don't even know if it's a universal claim she can just be for her like it's not going to make me happy maybe social media does make some people genuinely happy I don't know. It does. Twitter doesn't actually make me happy. It kind of bums me out. I, I usually just read Twitter and I just find myself liking humanity less and less. But, you know, that is a way of I guess promoting. it's also like I don't share Bo Burnham's disdain for social media and the Internet. Like, I, th- I think definitely it, it, it exaggerates and amplifies problems in our society and in our personal lives. I don't think of any of that and so I guess I just sort of disagree with that perspective on it see to me I think the way you just put it is almost certainly I think how Bo Burnham would put it maybe a little bit more emphatically but problems that we already have social media exacerbates or makes them worse I think that's almost certainly what his world would be and I bet if you ask Bo Burnham do you empathize with Kayla he would say yes absolutely I don't think he'd hesitate um, and yeah, sometimes the things we liked in junior high were silly and there's a little bit of the, uh, we kind of liked some dumb stuff when we were younger. I mean, that's fine. That's true. I sometimes squirm at the stuff that I liked or cared about. I mean, have you not ever seen a movie that you liked once? You're like, wait, I used to like that movie. Like never, never once. You're just like, oh, I get it. This movie was great. 13 only really had great taste in movies. I, they spot on. When I was 13, I loved the movie 13th Warrior. It's still an amazing movie. Is it? I've never seen it. Oh, or like Kid Rock. Like, Did you ever have a Kid Rock face where you're like, man, this guy, Kid Rock, his music rocks. I, I loved Kid Rock for a long time. That Limp Bizkit, I love Limp Bizkit too. Okay. Not do you huge. look back and think, oh, they're great? I, I do. Or do you I think, think oh, okay. That was, I was a little, a little childish to like those things. His, his politics are spot on. I mean, he's really grown. <laughs> I, I as a, yeah, as an adult. I'm glad he's standing up to the 
tyranny of Bud Light. Yeah, yeah, what a what a hero, the hero we need. Uh, I yeah, I don't know. I, I, I that was it's my, fine. That, maybe I'm wrong. That was just that was I, the lingering question I had when I was watching. Well, this, no, well, this is fast. I mean, it's the, this is one of the reasons why I'm glad we do the podcast, even though I disagree with your take on on this movie. Um, the the other question: Why was this bad. movie rated R? Because the F word? Because it said fuck a lot? Well, if you say fuck more than once, you're automatically rated R. Is you that can, it, though? I can't, I can't understand. That, that is a rule. That's a hard rule. But did they say fuck more than once in this movie? I guess I don't I, even remember. I, I don't know. I don't know. But they, they talk about it. seems like a was, huge error on the part of like marketing this movie. Like, why would you make this movie rated R? It should I'm, never have been rated R. Oh, I don't have a. Uh, it's fine. I, I, you were trying to accurately. This isn't kids, but you're actually you're act, trying to accurately convey as best as you possibly can in a movie, what eighth graders were going through in 2018. I mean, you filled it with, in, in well, part of it is with a lot of high school students. Part of it is I wanted to watch this with my kids. Oh, and then I saw this rated R and it's like, Oh, I probably shouldn't do that. But then I watched it and it's like, they might get something out of this. I don't know. They might've, might've enjoyed oh, that's it. Interesting. That's interesting. I mean, cause my kids are, they're going into Dude. fifth grade. I mean, Right, this will be them in three years or whatever right. it is. Yeah, and they already think in you're sixth grade. They're in middle leave. school, you know. Yeah. yeah, and I'm I'm a dorky dad that they tell me to get away from them all the time. <laughs> it happens uh, they finally, daily. They're they're meeting the real you. They know you. Yeah. They finally figured out who you actually are. Mm-hmm. Um, they make fun of my movie takes all the time. Well, sure, the, as they should. Um, Oh, that's interesting. I mean, I, I wouldn't show it to, I mean, my oldest is almost eight, but I wouldn't quite show it to her. I don't know if, if it even said fuck more than once, it would automatically get an R, but you had kids talking about blow jobs. Um, I don't know. They talk about stuff sexually. There's a sexually dangerous situation. I just feel like with a few tweaks, it could have absolutely have been PG 13. I'll see. I, I, there's very, there's almost nothing I would change about this movie. I mean, it's not long. It's an hour and a half. Um, it, it's not going for, it's just, it wants to keep it pretty authentic and uh, as authentic as it can for a movie. I feel like, okay, that's probably experience a lot of eighth graders had. I pff, doesn't seem, it seems very plausible at a minimum. Like, yeah, I, I know you had some issues with, like Lady Bird not being historically accurate with like music or whatever the issues were. <laughs> Somebody commented how there was the wrong car model in a scene or whatever that hadn't been released in 1999. Didn't get any of that vibe, so it felt very, very real. Um, and there's nothing more impactful. I mean, just the pool scene alone is, to me, worth the price of admission. It was just just great. Um, I don't know. I mean, Boomer had panic attacks on tour. This guy who's got all this fame and money was still not satisfied and still anxious about stuff. Um, and, you know, he reflected on social media and how he got famous and... I don't know. He, I mean, I don't know. His whole almost. His well, whole, he made the movie because he wa- he like watched YouTube videos of like kids that had no nobody wa- following them. Like you know, he's like, what's the point of it? Like, why are you doing this? That was the whole inspiration for the movie. Is yeah, and you think he just thought, what are these idiots? I'm gonna make fun of these losers who aren't as successful as me. They don't know how to do social media like me. They yes, may maybe I. No, oh, you see. think that's completely wrong? Uh, I mean, I, I yeah, think he I do. questioned yes. why they did that. He questioned, like, why, why, why would you ever do that? Why would I think you he make- understands why they would do that, even if it's depressing, even if it's ultimately unsatisfying. I think he understands or thinks or believes that social media is this this compulsion and you think as a kid that you need to do it. I don't know. That, that, see, that's the movie has a 99% Rotten Tomatoes rain, raking, ranking, rating. And do you think ranking? all these people just are there 99%. to laugh at, laugh at stupid eighth graders who just don't get how dumb social media is? I don't know. Man, I, that, that fascinates me. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, this is your brain, Eric, is a wonder. I love it. It confuses me. It baffles me. I don't, sometimes I, I'm befuddled by it. But I, I, I'm just glad to encounter a brain that sometimes sees things. I thought it had so some Oscar noms, but it didn't. I guess I was wrong about no, that. No, it wasn't wasn't big enough. And I mean, I thought he had like best original screenplay or something like that. 
Maybe not. The, scre- the screenplay is very good, um, but uh, you know, you, you, whatever the Oscars is, who cares? I mean, this is a great movie. Whether the Oscars recognize it or not is irrelevant to me. But uh, all right, I mean, how bad's the damage? How far off are we? We're off. I, we're not. I give it two and a half stars. Oh my god. Okay. For the reasons I said, like I, I just constantly was questioning yeah. whether or not he hated he hated the main character and hated what she cared about and hated. So if what, you felt that apart. wasn't the case, if you thought, okay. He gets why she wants to do this. He understands. He empathizes with her, even if he thinks, you know, social media isn't really the best path forward for her. Would th- that would change your rating of the movie. If Maybe, you felt that? but I also thought it was kind of reductive. It's like, okay, teenage kids use social media too much. Okay, no shit. Like, teenage kids need to not care so much about like their presence online. Yeah, no shit. Like, that's obvious. That's every movie ever. Okay. Right. Well, and and okay, your your main character is this like smart girl who people don't really know who she is, and she's actually like a really good person. And once people find out who she is, they realize that you know she's she's a very worth worthful person, and she's smarter than everybody around her, and they just don't get her. Like, how many times have we seen that character too? Book smart again. It's there's like a million movies about that same person. So the, the main character is not even all that original to in in the first place. There's nothing really all that original about this movie other than the internet piece of it. Oh, I disagree. There, I there's almost of, no movie like this. I guarantee you Booksmart isn't like this. They're going to get in zany situations. Oh my gosh, we got to steal this thing. Yeah, we got to do this comedy. Thing. We got to take drugs and it's implausible. There's no actual real world stakes because it's such made up silliness that there's no actual weight to anything that happens. Lady Bird, same, she's the same character. Oh, she's this is Billy Times better than Lady Bird. Um, and the whole point of the movie isn't that everybody needs to see how awesome she is because that's pointless. You you can't get to a point where everybody's going to see how awesome you are. That's the whole it, speech of the dad. The dad's great speeches. I've yeah, watched he, you. he thinks she's awesome and she may in fact be awesome, but trying to convince everybody else that you're awesome is pointless. She doesn't try to convince anybody that she's awesome. She has a, a nice time with another kid and that's it. I mean. She's like, I think if this was just a drama about the anxiety of being that age, it would have been a way better movie. It is Uh, about that. That's to me the mm, core thing. And then the social media stuff mm, is grafted. I think it's more about social media and and teenagers is is the way I viewed it. It was more about like really how scary that those situations are, which it did. It did a bit. I mean, like the part where she's in the auditorium and they're they're naming off like the awards and you could tell on her face. She's like, please don't say me like i don't want to be nominated for this and then they say her name and she's like fucking devastated like of course that's the anxiety you can feel that and i think that was well done they're just pulled in there those little pieces of the movie well, it's really just about instagram and being online I, boy, which is what such Bo- a... this was bull burnham's whole thing this whole... might be your worst take it's just not the case she's anxious in almost every scene she's terrified every scene she's trying desperately to get out of her shell to do stuff to, to put herself out there. She tries to take her advice. She sings karaoke, even though she's terrified in almost every single sequence. And she even gives that speech at the end, like, I'm terrified all the time. There's never any relief. It's like when you're about to I, you go down a roller, roller coaster. coaster yeah. And she is like that throughout the entire movie. And it's clear it's there. It doesn't scream at you that that's her mental state, but it's obvious if you look at her, her face that she's anxious nonstop. She's trying to figure out what to do socially nonstop. She's so worried about saying the wrong thing. What do I do? What's the correct thing? In almost every single scene. Like, it's just there always. Uh, sometimes more overtly, sometimes less. It, it, oh, gosh, I just, like, the core so is... What's your ranking? Five out of five. There's not a Wow, this is a five-star movie for you. It's, yes. Yes, absolutely. It's a great movie. Uh, saw in the theater and cackled all throughout, you know, time watching it with, and it really worked for my wife who rewatched it with me this time again, and you know my sister in law the first time around. It, it worked for all of us. It, it's great. I mean, it, it captures the essence, and yes, it absolutely talks and 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 is cynical about social media, but to me, the heart of the movie is be yourself, and yeah, that's a common message. That's fine. It's the execution that's unlike any movie I've seen. It's way better than Lady Bird's like a four out of five movie, really. 
this this is there's nothing I would change about this movie. It's it's perfect. It ends happy. It, this this is female empowerment. This is her you know, not given a binary choice in which the answer is obvious and then somebody's burned and then she smiles. Look, I'm yeah. I mean, th- this is this is real agency. She's coming to real self realizations about who she is and getting a little, just a little bit more confident. She's not a totally different person. Everybody doesn't like her. She doesn't save the day. She doesn't defeat the school shooter. And everybody says hooray. Both movies that we both, the last two movies were uh, me, movies starring a woman, but by a man. That That's kind of an interesting sure. perspective. That's interesting. And to me, like, Ari Aster, I, I don't, does he like uh danny in midsummer i don't know he seems to think very little of her i mean she doesn't have the confidence to talk about how she really feels and stand up for herself ever at any point in the movie kayla stands up for herself a hundred and fifty thousand percent more than danny ever does in midsummer and she sits there and is just just told what to do every second of the of the way give it drugs i mean it's so bizarre that, that was female empowerment to you and then this is like yeah seen it before Booksmart did it better. But whatever. This is why we have this podcast. This is fascinating. I, I was hoping we'd be closer. I was hoping it'd at least be three. But I Did you not. like it more the second time you watched it? I, I liked it about the same. I mean, the first time was probably... Was, I was more surprised by it the, the first time, so I laughed more. Uh, but then there's other stuff that kind of stuck out a little bit more. Um, but I see it and I think, oh, I, I feel for her from the beginning. Uh, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm with her. The whole time. So the other thing I don't did I mention like I really like Bo Burnham. Like that's the maybe that's not coming across. It, like, it isn't coming across because seems like, like you don't like it. That he inside social media. I thought was amazing. I Even really, though he criticizes social media on there and and he I think got that's famous? more honest. That's more honest about it. Like this was a like underhanded way of he he didn't criticize social media with this movie. He criticized the people that want to be famous oh. on social media, oh, which is God. the part that I think that's the difference about it for me. Oh, He's criticizing gosh. the people that basically aren't as good at it as him. She's not even. I boy, is that just? She's not even trying to get famous. She's trying to get a friend. If, she has like her videos. If have she was like news. funny and all of a sudden had all these social media followers, which he was. It would be a totally different She's movie. She's not funny. That's okay. Most people know. aren't that funny. So he's just made a movie about somebody who sucked at it when he was like really good at Most it. Most like people that... sucked at it. And it's but not he important. wasn't. He's a fucking awesome at it. He became famous and made movies because he was so good at social media. So what? It still is a, it still is a good for I think that's for, disingenuous. Still, I don't know. I, I, and I think your, your criticism of that is, is nonsensical because basically anybody who got famous in a field – can't criticize that field because that's how they got famous enough to have a criticism that people would pay attention it's not, to. It's not criticizing the field. It's criticizing the people that aren't good at it as, as good at it as no, you. That, it's that take that doesn't that's make like if sense. Anthony Bourdain spent whole his time talking about how bad other chefs are. He's not are. It's, criticizing it's, it's her like, for being bad. It's like the Gordon Ramsay guy, right? He makes shows about people that are shitty at cooking. Like, that's the same idea. Is, this, is this Bo is Burnham made a movie Ramsey. about people are shitty at fucking Good. social media? God, this is it's not the same Gordon idea. It's Gordon Ramsay yelling at bad chefs. Oh, that's that exactly is what this so movie is. not the case. That is such a dumb take. I'm so sorry. That, there's sorry around it. That is such a bad take. That is not. It's not, ha, 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 you're not as good at it as me. That is just not at all. And look how stupid about. you look because you suck at this. That's, she doesn't look stupid at all. She just wants a friend. He understands that. Not everybody is funny. He understands that. It's not a problem that she's not funny. And the only problem she has, insofar as saying, is that she lacks confidence. She's act anxious. You don't think there's anything about somebody who's super funny and amazing at making videos, mm-hmm. making a movie about somebody who isn't funny and is terrible at making videos? You don't so think there's some, anything there. So somebody who's really good at making movies can't make a movie about somebody about bad somebody at making shitty movies? At making movie. Don't you think that would be a little mean? Who did The Disaster Artist? Who directed that movie? I don't know, but that movie was a little mean. It, fucking, you're making my point. The Disaster uh, Artist was a little fucking mean, right? You're making fun of a guy who actually tried to make a movie but wasn't good at it and was terrible at it. It's and not, you're making a movie about it. When does the, when does the movie make fun? You know who made that movie? When does she get made fun James of? Franco. James when does Franco. She made that, get James made Franco made James Franco's a fucking asshole, right? When does she get made fun of for having low views? When is that the butt of the joke? It's the the, the, the first five minutes of the movie. And, leads and into you how, see you it. Scroll by how it's Why is that views. a joke? It's Two not views. a joke. 
It's not a joke. Though there isn't like ha ha ha. Look at how nobody likes this girl. That's absolutely not the tone it sets. Nobody is interested in her. We see that. It's not funny. Look at how pathetic it is that she has zero views. That's absolutely not the joke. The direction isn't the joke. It's not saying how funny it is she has no views. That there's no commentary on it. No other characters make fun of her for having no views. They might as well have had a split screen of Bo Burnham's YouTube views versus this girl's so YouTube views. So you saw that and you like, thought, oh, I'm fucking supposed awesome. to I'm... laugh at her because she has no views in that opening sequence. Not laugh at you're supposed to just feel really bad for yes, her. Yes, you feel bad for her, but not laugh at her. You're supposed to empathize. See how her pathetic pity. she is. I, why, I why doesn't nobody like her? What's the problem? Why Why is that? And then you get to know her, and she's a nice person. She's smart. No, she's not. Uh, well, she's not funny like he was. She's not Jonah Hill's brother or sister. So, okay, I guess she's not funny enough. She didn't but, make Weird Al, you know, videos where you're making fun of stuff like he did. He's just not good at it. He like doesn't he was. say like she should do something different. At no point, there's no mock. There's no joke about the, the, the it whole was point the impression is, I got. I'm sorry. That, you disagree. That okay. baffles me. Like All to right. me, you disagree. That, That's I, think, fine. I feel bad for this girl. Not she's so stupid for even trying. Fuck her. I'll tell you what. what if, idiot. if I didn't know this was made by Bo Burnham, I would probably have a totally different view on it. If it was just like this was made by Greta Gerwig. Oh, fuck. OK, the great. Like you made a really like insightful movie yet but i think i'm so totally clouded by the fact that ah. i know that this the guy that made this movie became famous making youtube videos and was funny and amazing at it and that's his whole persona that's baffles me and like even even thinking of the movie inside he doesn't mock people for wanting to connect or using social media that's not really criticism it's the structure it's the companies certainly jeff bezos um gets his own special song uh, on the movie but he doesn't blame the people for wanting to connect or using it he certainly has things that it's it's not no gonna inside end. isn't but i think this movie is but so it's weird you know that he's a famous guy that got famous on the internet who clearly has issues with social media and you look back at that and think he's making fun of this girl and i, I just think like i don't know how you avoid it is is I guess what I'm asking. Uh, I I have no I I, I see it totally different. I, I it's like baffles me. Like I, it, everything I see about Inside would would make me think that there's more empathy for our main character than less. Like there's nothing no part about what we know about Bo Burnham in 2023 that isn't. Oh yeah, this is impacting people in a way, and it's all totally not satisfying. It's not going to get people what they want. It didn't get me what I wanted because. I've got money and fame, which I guess I wanted, but I'm still deeply unhappy, um, which you can say is disingenuous because he's got money and fame. So he should. No, be I think that's genuine. And that's why I think Inside's amazing. And I think this movie isn't. But I think the seeds of that. Because I think, I think Inside, Inside is genuine. I think he is actually being honest about how he feels about it. I think this movie is not being honest about I, it. There's no part I see. I just it baffles me. Like he, he's being honest about how he feels about it. And he feels like it's it's a problematic structure. And then you look back at this and think he's not commenting on the structure. He's commenting on the rubes who aren't as good at it as him. I Boy, anyway, there's nothing else to say. Want the I'm, same I, thing that he want. He he got. I don't think she wants fame. I just don't even think that's her pursuit. Like, it's not like she's not getting enough likes and needs to get, get you know higher up. Paul Burnham at 16 when he had 8 million views on his YouTube videos was like popular in high school. I, I would beg to differ. I, 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 whether Bo Burnham was popular in high school is irrelevant. I'm talking about the character. I'm talking about Kayla. Her goal, I don't think, is I want to become famous with social media. I think her goal is I want to have friends and connect with people and be, you know, plugged in socially via social media. I mean, she's she has almost no views. It's not. I mean, it's not like I need more views to reach this like fame that I want. Like, it's not even about fame for her. It's like she doesn't have a friend. She doesn't have a single person who's her actual friend. Um, anyway, there's nothing else to say. I mean, I'm just I'm flummoxed by your take. I, I there's a lot of things I thought might be coming. The Bo Burnham is just belittling her for trying to do social media and sucking at it, and thus I couldn't get into the movie. And if somebody hey, other than Bo Burnham, maybe I'm an it, idiot. Maybe I'm wrong. That's just that was my takeaway. I, it's just I would have thought like, oh, if you're allowed to have your take, I'm just genuinely like 
I need to calm down because I'm more baffled than Matt. I'm just like, it's hard for me to fathom. I wouldn't have seen this this take coming. Like, oh, if somebody's name other than Bo Burnham was on this, I probably would have liked the movie more yeah. and seen it as less of an indictment. Yep. Which to me isn't even really a commentary on the filmmaking. You're just so suspicious of Bo Burnham. Of the filmmaker. It. Yeah, for sure. That's that's correct. That's a, that that's you're accurately summarizing my. I'm stealing your position. All right. Well, I love it. I think it's great. Most people love it. Eric does not. Ninety nine percent. Robert Eggers. Roger Ebert. Brian Eggert. Hey, he could be yeah. the next Roger Ebert. Sure. Uh, he uh, wrote a, a glowing, amazing essay on this movie. Loved it. I, well, he's correct. Uh, he's a smart guy. He's got great, great cinematic taste. Um. Anyway, it's it's an incredible movie. Um, I I bet he also thinks. I, I guess I got to read the essay now because I don't think he he thinks she's being belittled either, right? I mean, he's not like this is so cruel to our protagonist who. I mean, I, I don't know. No, he did not have that take. Okay, that's fascinating. Okay, I miss Eric. I love that you can amaze me. I love that after our just deep connection through all these years, I can still sometimes be up at the plate. I think I've seen all of Eric's pitches. I've seen the slider, seen the curveball, seen the fastball, seen the changeup, and all of a sudden here comes a goddamn knuckleball, and I have no <laughs> idea where the ball's coming, and I just whiff totally, end up on the ground, and can't process what the fuck just happened. Like holy cow, that's amazing. I got all the pitches, man. You are you are singular. <laughs> you are a singular singular vision. Um, let's get ourselves to uh, the five degrees of. Kevin Bacon, but not Kevin Bacon, Kevin Costner, or somewhere else. We're getting Field of Dreams. Sure. Would you like me to go first? Please, please do, yes. I will start with my favorite person in this movie is the dad. Uh, he's played by an actor, Josh Hamilton. And I, the whole time I was watching the movie, I was like, where do I know this fucking he's guy? Of- he's just around. Yeah, he's in a lot of stuff, but I, particularly the movie Kicking and Screaming. Have you seen that movie? Is that the Will Ferrell one? Nope. So this is, uh, I think, Noah Baumbach's first movie oh, back in the nice. mid '90s. It's about like graduating from high school. Um, it's not a movie I love, uh, but the the Josh Hamilton who plays the dad, he's the like lead of the movie. If you haven't seen it, I, you, I think you'd really like it. It's okay. a kind of a coming of age college movie about like yuppie college kids. I don't know. Okay. I didn't love it, but uh, he's in that movie with an uh, actor named Eric Stoltz. Oh, I know. Eric uh, yep. He's in Pulp Fiction and whatnot. The original uh, Marty McFly. Yep. He, uh, Eric Stoltz is also in Jerry Maguire for a bit. Okay. Uh, okay. Cuba Gooding Jr. is also in Jerry Maguire. Show me the money. Indeed he is. And he's in a movie called Coming to America with James Earl Jones, who's in Field of Dream. All right. Awesome. I thought about going to Josh Hamilton. I hadn't actually seen a lot of, I mean, I've seen he was in the show 13 Reasons Why. I think I've seen him in some shows more than I've seen him in movies, but I know he's in Manchester by the Sea, which I hadn't seen. Um, but I decided to do El- heavy movie. I- I've heard, I've never seen it. Um, doesn't sound like a fun watch. That sounds to me like like medicine, you know, or like I've just got to chew through, you know, thirty bits of cauliflower or something, um, you know. But Elsie uh, Fitcher, who I think is great in this movie, um, again, I. I- I think she does an awesome job. I'm convinced that she's an eighth grade girl and um, I believe her in every scene emphatically. She is one of the voices in Despicable Me. One of the two, one of the three kids that Steve Carell ends up adopting. Um, and I did Steve Carell, um, got him to Foxcatcher. Movie too slow for you, but I think is just an incredible, incredible slow burn. And it's just one of C. Carell's many, many amazing performances. He's, He's very good in that. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody's got Mark Ruffalo is great in it, too. Mark and Ruffalo that, is very good. I mean, I love it. I mean, he plays a guy that can't act. It's incredible. Um, so Mark Ruffalo is in a movie called Rumor Has It, um, romantic comedy with Jennifer Aniston, Matthew McConaughey, I think, and uh, Kevin Costner's in that. Kevin Costner's in the field of dreams. There we go. I think, yeah, I think we've used that movie before. Sure. I'll try to find an original one next time. No, 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 no. I, I was just saying because I've never seen it, but I remember it coming up before. I think so. my wife has the DVD. I don't think I've ever watched it. It doesn't look interesting to me even slightly, but it just seems like no, an if, if we had to like use new movies, th- this would be very difficult. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Field of Dreams thing. But, yeah. 
Um, I think Terry Bradshaw's in that movie too. I think you like uh, Steelers quarterback from the seventies. Yeah. Why wouldn't it be? Sure. But all right, Eric, we've been we've been completely out of sync for now three weeks straight. Yeah. We're not even in the ballpark. We've been nope. two and a half not stars even the same at least away. Sport. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, correct. So let's see. Are we gonna get back on track here? We're we gonna. Uh, we... I, we'll see. Um. All right. So. The movie we will do next week. Uh, I'll give some clues to it. Maybe you can guess it. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, I'll start with the first clue. This movie was released in 1995. Okay. 90s film. So we're going to, going a little bit back in time. Uh, go this movie back in time. is actually a prequel to another movie. Okay. All right. Before prequels uh, were all over the place. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, so this movie was filmed in the great state of Minnesota. Okay. Doesn't help me. Never Doesn't heard of help it. Never heard of the state of Minnesota. Uh, person by the name of Stan Lee appears in this movie. Oh, God. Okay. From Marvel fame. Stanley appears in a movie, 95. It's too early for the X-Men movies. It's too early for Spider-Man. I don't know. All right, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm, I'm... Okay, uh, I'll give one more clue. Uh, well, I'll give uh, several clues. Um, let's see. The movie stars Jason Lee, and it's in the f- view oh, of Skew universe. Mall rats? Mall rats is correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's correct. Forgot it. Okay. Goodness uh, gracious. Hadn't seen this movie for a really long time. I, I know I've seen it before. Uh, don't really totally remember it. Uh, I guess uh, Kevin Smith was, he's going on a tour or something and he's coming here. And he was talking about um, how they filmed this Eden, Eden Prairie at the Eden Prairie Mall and was like making a big deal about that when he came back here. And sure. I was like, oh, shit. I, I actually didn't even remember that it was filmed here. So well, you got to pander to the locals. Tell it's them on they're special. Tubi. It's on Tubi if you want to watch it on uh, for free streaming service. With a lot with of commercials. Commercials, commercials yeah. or you could rent it. That's the best way to watch movies, I think. All right. I, no, I, but I, we could talk Kevin Smith. I haven't talked Kevin Smith before. I have kind of mixed emotions oh, on Kevin I, Smith. I, uh, as do most people. I think there are very few ride or dies for Kevin Smith at this point. Um, I but, really yeah. like him like as a personality, like on podcasts and sure. him, like I find him very interesting and like a compelling speaker and like writer too. Um, I don't love his movies a whole lot. Uh, some of them I like. Okay. And we'll see about mall rats. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, have, I, you, I, have you not watched it recently? I'm hoping you didn't like watch it two weeks ago or something. No, 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 no. I haven't seen it in a while, but I mean, I remember some sequences in it pretty vividly. There's a couple, a couple of scenes. I remember very well, two or three lines exchanges. I remember Ben Affleck in it pretty distinctly um yeah that was the other piece is ben affleck's been doing a bunch of stuff because he's in the air movie the um you know movie about air jordan and stuff and uh yeah this is like one of his first movies and he's he's kind of like a bit character in it yeah he hadn't yet rocketed superstar to right. we hadn't had goodwill hunting yet it's pre-goodwill yeah uh no, oh, yeah, that's right. They had their little thing with Kevin Smith for a while because they were in Dogma. Dogma well. too, yeah. Which may maybe my favorite Kevin Smith movie. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Might be mine actually yeah. too. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about it. But yeah, you know, I haven't I haven't seen Mall Rats in a while. Yeah. Looking forward to revisiting it. I was um, hoping maybe we could go to the Eden Prairie Mall to record it, but that's not going to happen. No. Yeah, I don't think I can get up to Eden Prairie. Is this still there? This. It's still there, right? It seems like one of the places. Well, I don't know. You're, you're the one that lives uh, much closer to Eden Prairie. Definitely don't spend any time in Eden Prairie, but well, we, we used to have uh, friends with a, a couple of people that lived there, a couple of families. But uh, it seems like kind of place where a mall could keep living. I mean, it's very suburban. You know, people. Yeah. A lot of white people who like shopping at, you know, box stores. Or eighth um, graders that want to go to the food court. Oh yeah, an eighth grader wanting to go to the mall—that's crazy, <laughs> unfathomable. Totally couldn't buy that. We need to be dropped off. The day. they can't be seen with their dad. You know? Of course, yeah. I'm, they, dude, I'm not far away from that. I, I, I get it. Yeah. I remember feeling that. Um, yeah. 
I'm not quite there yet, but I get I get it a little bit, but uh, I don't think nearly the degree. Dad, either, you're so. embarrassing me. I'm and you're so, just like standing there. You're not even saying anything. You're I'm just, just existing. here. I'm just you're, here. Yeah. You're driving. Dad, don't drive like that. I'm just driving. No, but don't have that look on your face. But don't not have not that look on your face. And you're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have to I love, take up I love in that shot where you don't see the dad's face too. I think that's pretty brilliant. He's yeah, like, see, it's a nice directorial decision. Sure. All right, it's three stars. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm glad that I, my histrionics can give you a pity half star, sort of. Um, All right, well, thanks for listening, everybody. Bye-bye. Appreciate it.